the Huntington News Center, the region's number one news. This is News Center 3 at 6. For months after selective strikers began, uh, strikes began in the coal fields, brother, some miners were still walking the picket line and hanging in there. Marion Herman reports. These picketers are striking the Rocky Hollow Coal Company in Lebeda. It's a subsidiary of A.T. Massey Coal. Since October, Massey has been refusing to sign the UMW contract, and these miners have refused to work. President of Local 2248, Jim Reed. Well, we would like to have a contract signed whereby that the president of Raw Sales Division would sign it, and they would honor the full contract, everything between the two covers. The UMW full contract? Yes, ma'am. They want the contract, and they do get $200 a week in strike benefits, but say it's still tough. Oh, I'd like to go back to work, definitely. Uh, I don't think there's any, there's going to be any end to it anywhere soon, but, you know, we don't know. We go along uh, with Richard Trumpkin, what he says, and we, and we feel he's done a good job so far, a real good job. Are you hurting financially out here in the line? Well, yeah, it's days a financial burden, you know, but we can we can take it. The miners are trained to mine, not strike. But while they have to strike, they just look forward to when the contract's signed and when they can mine again. Marianne Herman, WSAZ News Center 3, Labeda, West Virginia. From WCHS TV 8 Charleston, with bureaus in Paintsville, Parkersburg, Huntington and Beckley. This is News 8. Elsewhere in the news, reports of scattered violence continued last week in a coal strike that's now in its fifth month in West Virginia and in Kentucky. Bob Aaron reports one of the nation's largest coal companies, A.T. Massey, is the target of conflict with the United Mine Workers Union. 95% of the nation's unionized coal mines are now going about business as usual. These mines signed a new nationwide agreement with the United Mine Workers Union back in September. It averted the massive strikes that have crippled the coal mining business at contract time for the past 20 years. But some companies, including the A.T. Massey Coal Group, refused to go along. Those firms are now the target of a UMW selective strike that started October 1st. The easygoing picket lines and horseshoe games that characterize the strike are gone now. Pickets often carry baseball bats and greet company vehicles wearing ski masks. There have been claims of violence leveled against both union and management. Company vehicles have been burned and damaged. Strikers say they've been injured by company trucks. Most of the friction has been at Massey Mines. The company says it's fighting for its economic survival. But strikers say there is no way they will let Massey reopen any mines as non-union operations. I said, we're standing here to fight till the last breath is gone. Because I'm a, definitely a union man, and my dad died a union man. But, uh, this administration, this union, is going to stand with them as long as it takes to get them a fair and equitable contract. Some battles are being fought in court where judges are limiting the number of pickets and security guards at some mines. State police are monitoring the situation in West Virginia. Troopers admit there is a potential for more violence as the strike drags on. Bob Aaron, WCHS-TV News 8 in the West Virginia coal field. Live from the Huntington and Charleston News Centers, the region's number one news. This is News Center 3 tonight. And more problems today stemming from the UMW strike of A.T. Massey in Labeda, West Virginia. The UMW today filed a petition in the state Supreme Court that alleges Massey is illegally employing out-of-state security guards at two of those mines in Mingo County. The petition asked the court for an injunction to halt this practice. The petition is on the docket to be heard tomorrow by the Supreme Court. From WCHS-TV 8 Charleston, with bureaus in Paintsville, Parkersburg, Huntington, and Beckley. This is News 8. As the strike continues at a southern West Virginia coal mine, in the wake of violence, mine owners have tried a new tactic. They've published a letter in several newspapers around the state urging the union to get back to negotiations. But as Bob Aaron reports, the strikers aren't responding with much enthusiasm. 
The president of Big Bear Mining Company says he hopes a series of newspaper ads stating the company's position will lead to new contract talks with the United Mine Workers Union. Norman Lester published this letter as a paid ad in several newspapers. The letter asked Union President Rich Trumka to start new talks. UMW members have been on strike at the Wyoming County Mine since October 1st. Talks also broke off in October. Violence hit the mine January 23rd when guards and miners clashed. Lester says he understands Trumka won't hold new talks unless guards are removed. Lester agreed to do that if the union meets several conditions, including letting all the strikers attend the bargaining session. That idea didn't generate much enthusiasm on the picket line. Some strikers thought he was trying to undercut their negotiating team. I think what they're going to try to want us to do is try to see the concessions like they have in the past. And we cannot take concessions. Others felt there was nothing to negotiate since the union has already reached an agreement with the Bituminous Coal Operators Association that most of the industry has signed. No one at UMW headquarters in Washington was available for comment. Bob Aaron, WCHS-TV, News 8, Linco, West Virginia. And the UMW says two A.T. Massey subsidiaries are illegally employing out-of-state security guards in Mingo County. And the union wants the state Supreme Court to make the company get rid of those guards. Today, lawyers for UMW President Rich Trumka filed the legal petition with the court, and it's scheduled to be presented to the justices tomorrow. Now, that petition covers guards at Rocky Hollow Coal Company's mine and the Sprouse Creek Processing Plant near Labada. From WCHS TV 8 Charleston, with bureaus in Paintsville, Parkersburg, Huntington, and Beckley. This is News 8 Night Desk. Meanwhile, things haven't looked so good for some miners, but owners of a southern West Virginia coal mine want striking workers to become more directly involved in negotiations, so they've come up with an idea. The owners of Big Bear Mining Company in Lenco, West Virginia, are trying a tactic they've never used before. It's a newspaper ad urging more negotiations. UMW workers have been on strike at the Wyoming County Mine since October. The ads were purchased in several newspapers by Big Bear President Norman Lester. Lester asking that all strikers attend a new bargaining session, and in return, he promises to remove guards from the strike site. So far, the strikers have not responded favorably. UMW officials have not commented. You're watching WOWK-TV, Channel 13, Huntington, Charleston, West Virginia. This is Action News, the area's most complete report on West Virginia, Kentucky, and Ohio with anchorman Bob Smith, Terry Bumgarner Sports, Melody Walters Computer Radar Weather, and the area's most dynamic news team, the award-winning Action News team. Now, Channel 13's Bob Smith. The strike goes on at the Big Bear Mining Company but President Norman Lester is trying to end it through advertising. He's running huge ads in newspapers asking UMW President Richard Trumka to return to the negotiating table. From WCHS TV 8 Charleston, with bureaus in Paintsville, Parkersburg, Huntington, and Beckley, this is News 8 Night Desk. UMW President Rich Trumka plans to meet with district officials next week to talk over strategies in the union's negotiations with the A.T. Massey Coal Group. Trumka is to hold a news conference Monday in Charleston. Some union sources say a strategy session involving officers of the three districts where miners are on strike has been called for the same day also in Charleston. From WCHS TV 8 Charleston, with bureaus in Paintsville. Parkersburg, Huntington, and Beckley. This is News 8. There's optimism at the Big Bear Mining Company in Lincoln, West Virginia. Today at 10 o'clock, security guards will bust off that property. Earlier in the year, violence occurred at that mine when security guards appeared on the scene. The striking miners thought there was no need to have guards protecting the site, and they took it as a message that management didn't want to bargain with them. But now that local union president Danny Short and Big Bear Mining president Norman Lester have met and discussed those problems, both sides say they're optimistic a contract can be signed in the near future. You're watching WOWK-TV, Channel 13, Huntington, Charleston, West Virginia. 
This is Action News, the area's most complete report on West Virginia, Kentucky, and Ohio with anchor Rachel Platt, Dave Metzold Sports, exclusive computer radar weather, and the entire award-winning Action News team. Now, Channel 13's Rachel Platt. Security at the Big Bear Mine in Wyoming County won't be so tight tomorrow. Officials say they'll remove the security guards as part of an agreement with the United Mine Workers. Right now, union members are picketing the property as part of a selective strike. Big Bear President Norman Lester says the guards will leave the mine early tomorrow morning. You're watching WOWK-TV Channel 13, Huntington, Charleston, West Virginia. This is Action News, the area's most complete report on West Virginia, Kentucky, and Ohio with anchor Rachel Platt, Dave Metzold Sports, exclusive computer radar weather, and the entire award-winning Action News team. Now, Channel 13's Rachel Platt. Good evening. A plane crash in Portsmouth kills two people, and one popular passenger rail may never get back on track because of budget cuts. But the big story on Action News, a pullout for security reasons. The current dispute at the Big Bear Mine in Wyoming County has been eased somewhat. Armed guards were bussed out this morning, and now negotiations are underway. Rick Williams was there. With dark plastic taped to the inside windows, three buses departed the Big Bear Mining Company, presumably carrying away scores of armed security guards. Figure they're trying to hide something. The guards were hired last month by the company, a subsidiary of A.T. Massey, to keep these picketing UMW workers from getting violent. But according to members of Local 7692, that only made things worse. You had a rough time with him. Uh, things can only get better. I don't think it really can get any worse. But now the departure of the guards signals an arrival of hope for the miners. For the first time since October, both sides have agreed to negotiate a new contract. It's really important to the community. There's less attention in the whole county. We really want is for them to sign the BCOA agreement. That's it. At, as far as I'm concerned, and I think really that's what most people want. But the president of the Big Bear Mining Company says he simply does not have the money to provide all the benefits guaranteed in the contract and is therefore asking the union to make some concessions. The union says no. And so while one stumbling block has been cleared away, a larger, more difficult one remains. Rick Williams, TV 13 Action News in Wyoming County. Live from the Huntington and Charleston News Centers, the region's number one news. This is News Center 3 tonight. United Mine Workers President Rich Trunka says the union's four-and-a-half-month-old strike against the A.T. Massey coal mines in southern West Virginia will last a lot longer. Trunka was in Charleston today for a strategy meeting with UMW local officials. Trunka says the major stumbling block in negotiations is Massey's refusal to acknowledge control of its subsidiaries in the Appalachian coal fields. Massey's president, E. Morgan Massey, maintains that his company is just a brokerage that sells coal to many of the small companies known as Massey subsidiaries from WCHS TV 8 Charleston with bureaus in Paintsville, Parkersburg, Huntington, and Beckley. This is News 8. The head of the United Mine Workers Union says he will escalate the selective strike against one of the nation's largest coal producers. As Bob Aaron reports, UMW President Rich Trumka is in Charleston tonight to plan the union's next move in the strike that began over four months ago. 2,500 coal miners are still on strike against mining companies that refused to sign a new contract with the UMW last fall. The main target of the strike is the A.T. Massey Coal Group, a top 10 coal producer. Union President Rich Trumka met with union leaders to escalate the strike Monday. He wouldn't comment on his next move, but the company has a large number of non-union mines that haven't been picketed so far in the job action. Trumka told reporters he wants to negotiate with Massey, not with its small mining companies that dot the hills of West Virginia and Kentucky. Trumka claims the subsidiaries frequently fold up, leaving union miners without seniority rights and medical benefits. Then the company creates another subsidiary on paper and mines the same coal. And it can only be described as a corporate shell game to take profits out of this area, distribute them not only across the United States, but across the world, and leave the little people down at the bottom with no recourse. 
Trump could use a series of charts to back up his claim that he's dealing with a multi-billion dollar international corporation, not a group of mom and pop mines. But the president of one of Massey's small companies denied his mine as part of a solid corporate block trying to break the union. And uh, the company stands on its own. If the company generates a profit, then we remain open. And uh, if the company does not generate a profit, then that company could close down, or our company could close down. Lester says he's ready to negotiate, but Trumka says he wants Massey's name on any contract he negotiates with the smaller companies. Bob Aaron, WCHS-TV, News 8, Charleston. From WCHS-TV 8, Charleston. With bureaus in Paintsville. Parkersburg. Huntington. And Beckley. This is News 8 Night Desk. Rich Trumka was in Charleston today for strategy meetings on the union strike against the A.T. Massey Coal Company. Trumka says the UMW is having trouble negotiating a new contract with that company because Massey refuses to acknowledge its control of, over subsidiary coal mines. Trumka says the company is insisting on separate union contracts for each of its 26 subsidiaries to delay contract approval. Company president E. Morgan Massey has previously said his company is simply a coal broker with sales agreements with its subsidiaries. A coal mine clash in Mingo County, West Virginia, early today left four people injured, several vehicles damaged, and state police planning several arrests. Several hundred miners were gathered at the Sprouse Creek Preparation Plant, the scene of several tense confrontations before, like this one last month. When the plant resumed operations and non-union employees attempted to enter today, cars were stopped and damaged, damaged, occupants hauled out and beaten. The United Mine Workers Union has been picketing the plant as part of its dispute with the A.T. Massey Coal Company. W.O.A.Y. TV 4, Oak Hill, Beckley. Governor Moore has sent an unspecified number of extra troopers into Mingo County to maintain law and order after a violent outbreak by striking coal miners. The outburst came one day after UMW President Richard Trumka vowed to escalate the situation. Four people were hurt and four vehicles were damaged in violence surrounding the strike at Rawls Sales Processing at its Sprouse Creek Processing Facility. State police are investigating an incident in Mingo County today in which at least four people were injured and numerous vehicles damaged. A crowd of up to 500 people gathered along Route 49 near Matewan, where two coal operations are being struck by the UMW. The group reportedly stopped several cars carrying employees of the Sprouse Creek Processing Plant and Cumberland Village Mining. State police say some of the employees were assaulted and their vehicles damaged extensively. Authorities say arrests will be made. There was a confrontation between striking members of the United Mine Workers and employees of an A.T. Massey subsidiary early this morning. State police say at least six people were injured and four cars overturned the incidents in the Lobeta and Matewan areas. The pickets, estimated between 300 and 500, blocked a highway near Rawl Sales Processing Company's office building and its Sprouse Creek Processing Plant. State police and other law enforcement officers are now patrolling the area and Don Blackenship, president of Raw Sales, has sent a telegram to Richard Trumka, president of the UMW, urging him to stop perpetrating the kind of violence that happened today. You're watching WOWK-TV, Channel 13, Huntington, Charleston, West Virginia. This is Action News, the area's most complete late-night report on West Virginia, Kentucky, and Ohio with anchorman Bob Smith. Terry Pumgarner Sports, Melody Walters Computer Radar Weather, and the area's most dynamic news team, the award-winning Action News Team. Now, Channel 13's Bob Smith. Governor Moore has ordered more state troopers into violence-plagued Mingo County. Moore's action came after trouble broke out of the picket line of an A.T. Massey coal mining subsidiary. The governor said, we are not going to tolerate this type of disregard of the law. As many as four people were injured and four vehicles damaged. Hundreds of striking union members blocked the highway near the Raw Seals Processing Company's office in Lobeta. A.T. Massey, the parent firm, has been the target of selective strikes by the United Mine Workers Union. Governor Moore would not say how many troopers are being sent to the trouble spot because of what he refers to as security reasons. 